We performed uh, a um, prospective clinical trial in patients with unresectable, previously untreated hepatocellular carcinoma. Um, as we're all familiar with, the current standard of care for first-line therapy for unresectable um, or metastatic hepatocellular carcinoma is comprised of um, tyrosine kinase inhibitors such as lenvatinib or serafinib. Um, these have modest response rates and significant toxicity profile. Um, immune checkpoint inhibitors also have activity, but also have modest response rates. And we know that anti-angiogenic therapies are also immunomodulatory and are, you know, and thus there's rationale to, to combine the therapies to, for synergy. In this study, we treated um, patients in two arms with the combination of atezolizumab and bevacizumab um, in two different arms. And one arm was a non-randomized single arm study in which all patients received atezolizumab and bevacizumab intravenously every three weeks. The second arm was a randomized study in which patients were randomized to receive either the combination of atezolizumab and bevacizumab or atezolizumab monotherapy. So we found, um, so the primary endpoint for the, of the non-randomized arm of the study was the overall response rate per independent review facility assessed resist 1.1 criteria and safety. We found that the overall response rate was an impressive 36%. Notably, there was a 12% complete response rate and a disease control rate of 71%. Um, and that's with a median follow-up of a little over 12 months in that arm. Um, results were also similar when we looked at the results using alternative assessment criteria, such as the HCC modified resist or investigator assessed resist 1.1. In the randomized arm, the primary endpoint was progression-free survival, and the goal of the, of the randomized arm was to test the hypothesis that the combination of atezolizumab and bevacizumab would result in superior efficacy compared to atezolizumab monotherapy. Um, there's a shorter median follow-up of um, just over six months. However, we did find a significant improvement in progression-free survival with the combination of atezolizumab and bevacizumab compared to atezolizumab alone. The uh, hazard ratio for the progression-free survival was 0 0.55 uh, with a p-value of 0 0.01. And that translates to a 45% decrease in the risk of progression or death with the combination compared to monotherapy. So our conclusion is that the combination of atezolizumab and bevacizumab shows um, an impressive and exciting response rate that that I you know exceeds the response rate that we would expect certainly with any monotherapy or any current standard of care um, and we see from the randomized arm of the study that the combination of atezolizumab and bevacizumab does indeed result in superior progression-free survival compared to immune checkpoint inhibitor alone um, indicating that this combination strategy um, does indeed result in an improved uh, outcome. The, these results uh, were impressive enough that a phase three uh, study, the Embrave 150 study, had been started. Uh, it's actually completed um, enrollment, although results are pending, um, and we're eagerly looking forward to those results. Um, I think the results of Embrave 150 are really going to determine um, the regulatory fate of, of this combination um, but I think with the data we've generated so far, we um, are very, very excited and looking forward to those results.